uh, at a long uh, plan land uh, to announce the national approach uh, to cleaning up the site after the disruption and the apprehension of perpetrators. The Australian Crime Commission and indeed law enforcement agencies around the country have been very successful in disrupting plan lab uh, over the last number of years. Indeed, there's been a 30% increase in the disruption of plan labs in one year alone. Uh, almost 600 clandestine labs set up to manufacture illicit drugs have been disrupted uh, by anywhere more successful than in Queensland, and I applaud the efforts of the Queensland Police and indeed the Minister for Police here to disrupt these uh, fan labs. But as we know, the job is not done after the disruption of the labs and the apprehension of the perpetrators. We need to make sure these sites uh, are indeed safe for future users, future tenants of these sites, and for that reason we've, uh, uh, along with of course state governments, um, announced a national approach to the remediation of these sites in order to ensure we protect the community. What we know about plan labs is that 70% uh, of the plan labs happen to be located in residential areas. For this reason, we have to be um, vigilant in ensuring that law enforcement agencies refer um, the matter when they can uh, to local authorities in order to ensure that uh, future occupants are not endangered by toxic material that is left after, as I say, a successful disruption uh, of a plan lab. So for that reason, I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with Neil, who, as I say, as Minister, has overseen a very successful, a very high level of protection of these plan labs. Drug, illicit drug manufacturing is one of the primary sources of income for serious and organised crime. Uh, we need to continue to dedicate our efforts to smash uh, organised syndicates. Um, it costs the community in this country up to $15 billion each and every year. But as we do that, as we fight crime, as we tackle serious and organised crime, we have to ensure the community is safe. And that's why this national approach to remediating sites is so important. Thank you very much. Uh, look, firstly, can I uh, thank the federal government and indeed the Australian Crime Commission for working with the states and territories to develop these remediation guidelines. Uh, drug labs involve very toxic chemicals. Um, it's harmful to humans, harmful to the environment, so it's critically important uh, that we have the appropriate guidelines to ensure that a clean up after the event uh, can remediate a property into a safe space. Queensland Police have been very proactive uh, in targeting illegal drug labs throughout the state. Uh, we're dealing here with killer drugs. We've got to get the drug labs shut down and the people behind those the perpetrators. Over the last 12 months or so, Queensland Police have been very successful in uh, shutting down a number of illegal drug operations or drug lab operations. Uh, last year, uh, the number of drug labs detected and shut down was about double the year before. Uh, the trend this year is slightly less, but still far too many. Queensland Police have been very proactive uh, in working with uh, other agencies in uh, identifying and shutting them down. Uh, there's been significant public education. Uh, we rely very much as well upon the information provided by the community. Uh, initiatives such as Project Stop have been very successful uh, in identifying uh, potential uh, people involved uh, in drug labs. Uh, and that's a, a system whereby uh, repeat purchases of pseudoepigen products are reported immediately to police. There's also a very strong regulatory environment in terms of the uh, materials used, both the precursor chemicals, uh, the glassware that's used, uh, very strongly regulated, uh, and police revised as um, purchases which may lead to criminal activity. Uh, the Queensland public, and indeed the public across the country, uh, can assist police greatly uh, in protecting these drug labs. Uh, we encourage people. Uh, to call 1800 000 000, uh, 000, uh, Crime Stoppers, if they have any suspicions about drug maintenance activity in their neighbourhood. Uh, for example, homes with windows blacked out, uh, suspicious activity uh, during the day or during the night, uh, and uh, regular visits uh, by people with strong smells. All of these things are indicators of illegal activity, and we really encourage uh, the community to call Crime Stoppers at uh, 1800 000. 000. Thank you.
Can I just say, uh, firstly, the reason why we're both here today is because we need a close cooperation between the state and the federal government. And so how they'll work in effect is having a step-by-step -step approach from the time the plan lab is detected a by law enforcement agencies. Now, there'll be some uh, period of time where the site may have to be closed off and sealed for uh, purposes of gaining evidence. Uh, but we need to make sure there's a uh, proper process where uh, any potential dangers that may arise beyond the closure sealing of that site is referred to local authorities and indeed the, 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 uh, the landlord or the owner of the property to ensure that there's no future dangers for future Isn't that being done now? Well, I think, I think, I think that uh, uh, we've been very successful in recent years uh, in uh, detecting these plan labs. There's been a 50% increase in two years across the country in disrupting the plan labs. And our concern is that we need to ensure that there is not a, a gap between law enforcement operations uh, and regulatory bodies to ensure safety on site beyond the disruption. Now, I don't believe that's been done as well as it could have been done. And I believe the, this step-by-step -step guide to how we proceed post the disruption is critical. What's your suggestion? How long would the process be remote? Well, look, it will depend on the circumstances and indeed, but that's why you need the experts to make decisions. It's not like a service station, surely. You know. Well, it will depend upon the circumstances and it will depend upon the toxicity of the site. And you leave that to the experts to determine. Uh, but there has to be a proper handover from law enforcement agencies to local authorities, whether it be the local council uh, and their inspectors, whether it's the environment, environment inspection authorities. It will have to be handled properly. Uh, we have to make sure that not only do we catch criminals, but we protect the community. And I believe having a national approach, um, you know, what that is, a partnership between federal and state governments is critical. And that's why, of course, the minister and I am Today to announce this approach. How harmful are these chemicals and, uh, you know, what kind of chemicals are they? Well, they can be potentially fatal. Uh, these, are, these are very dangerous drugs. Uh, the precursors can injure and they kill uh, people. And indeed, uh, we would worry in particular if children were to wander onto the site um, after a disruption uh, and come across chemicals that could potentially kill that child. Now, that's why it's critical that we manage this process well, that we ensure that law enforcement agencies <coughs> do their job, and they're doing a magnificent job, I might add, uh, in this regard, in, in these disruptions. But we have to ensure that post that, that, that uh, seizure of the lab, that uh, we have proper steps in place to protect the community. And the other day, they can be responsible for taking the market. Well, ultimately, following the Excellent the laboratory, the Queensland Police Service will obviously uh, declare the situation a crime scene. Once it's ready to be handed over to the owners of the property, notice is provided to both the local government authority and to the property owner, so that direct advice is provided. Ultimately, at this point, it's the responsibility of the property owner to ensure that it's remediated to its own state. It's obviously in their own interest if it's a, a, a household, but if it's property is to be rented, uh, whether it be a private property or to another business, uh, it's the property owner which uh, has that ultimate responsibility. How, uh, how are you going to Well, it's a duty of care that the, the property owner has. There's no uh, legal requirement which can be enforced at this stage, but obviously that's a matter that we will need to monitor uh, across the country. So this is an important step today. This is uh, releasing of national guidelines on of sites which have been subject of illegal drug labs. Drug lab. So the advice has been provided to both uh, owners of properties, household and business owners, is to give them the advice they need to have their property properly remediated so they can be used in their property of safety. Well, 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 there have obviously have been different standards applied in different states for some time. Uh, this is a step now to national consistency to give property owners right across the country some consistency. I do uh, thank, as I've said this.